Squirrel, why all these new people run through this fire? Hmm, new monster past big salt stone. Good loot. When it be dead, me like privacy. Runeweith no make guide yet. No one killed monster. Oh, hey fellas. Lucky for you two, I've got a guide which is going to cover everything people need to know about killing RuneScape's newest boss, the Phantom Muspa. This boss has some fairly hefty requirements because it's a repeatable encounter for a quest boss similar to Forkath. You'll need to complete a, the new Secrets of the North quest, which has a stat requirement of 69 agility, 64 thieving, 56 hunter. You'll also need to have the following quests completed, Making Friends with My Arm, The General Shadow, Devious Minds, and Hazel Cult. This boss resides in a new dungeon behind the salt mines in Weiss. The fastest way will be using an icy basalt or weiss teleport from your player owned house and climbing through the fence and just down into the salt mines. If you don't have either of those options, you can always use Larry's boat, which is just northeast of Relica, to sail to Weiss. Very Ring DKS is going to be your closest teleport to Larry's boat. So since this boss is so new, not everything about it has been fully optimized yet. I had a chance to try out the twisted bow and the Zerite crossbow here and they absolutely slap at this boss. That being said, I know that not everyone has the luxury of a Twisted Bow and a ZCB. There has been a good bit of controversy about this boss being mid-level and what exactly a mid-level boss is supposed to be in terms of difficulty, requirements, and gear. In my personal opinion, this boss feels a lot like Vorkath in terms of difficulty, but has mechanics that remind me a bit of Zulra. There's movement and gear switching involved as well as some prayer flicking. It's definitely not a Seracnus style mid-level boss fight, and although it is killable with low-level gear like the Rune Crossbow, Trident, and Void, it's going to be pretty tough to get more than one or two kill trips consistently. That's why my recommendation is to have the Bow of Ferendidon and full Crystal Armor before really diving into this boss. Just like you can farm Vorkath with a Rune and Dragon Crossbow, it gets much smoother with a Lance or a Dragon Hunter Crossbow. I realize mid-level gear is subjective to each player and that the Bofa in Full Crystal is like 180 mil, but that is still the suggestion I'm going to recommend. I've gotten some flack in the past for stating that content can be done in a lower tier of gear and then showing examples of me doing it with some best in slot items. This boss has been done in lower level gear and it is possible, but I'm recommending that you have the Bofa in Crystal Armor and that is what I'm going to be giving examples of within this video. Let me know your thoughts about what mid-level bossing and gear means to you in the comments section down below. For the rest of my gear, I bring an Anguish, Rada's Blessing, Barrow's Gloves, and Assembler for the range strength and accuracy bonuses. For my boots, I have actually been bringing Eternal Boots for the Mage accuracy bonus. The Muspa has some serious Mage defense, so anything that helps me catch a freeze on him with Ice Barrage is going to be worth an extra inventory slot. For my inventory, I bring a full set of arms, imbued god cape, occult necklace, toxic trident, Eladinus ward, and a tormented bracelet. I also bring two super restore potions, one prayer potion, one sardoman brew for emergencies, and a ranging potion. I fill the rest of my inventory with combo eats like manta rays or shark and karambwans, and lastly, I save my last two spots for my rune pouch filled with blood, death, water, and soul runes, and a one-click teleport. I use my farming cape here since it's close to a bank and a spirit tree to get me back to my house. One quick tip is to always go into the Muspa fight with your mage gear equipped for two primary reasons. Firstly, he spawns in a random form, either mage or melee. If it is in melee, you only have a few seconds to pray, barrage, and move while he chases you. There's barely any time to switch your, to, uh, from your range gear into your mage gear or you're going to end up tanking a hit. Second, since the Boa Ferendina is two-handed, you get an extra inventory spot for food when you wear your mage gear. The last thing I wanted to talk about is your spellbook. This is one of the first bosses I've encountered where I've been torn between using two spellbooks. I'll list out the pros and cons of each and make a suggestion, but ultimately you're going to have to decide what works for you. 
I like the ancient spellbook here, especially when learning because you're able to freeze the Muspa while he is in his melee form. This saves on run energy and ensures that you don't need a stamina potion. Second, I'm not a huge fan of kiting bosses around the room. It's a lot of clicking and it gets a lot harder with the Muspa when he starts creating spikes around the arena. Uh, freezing just feels like a laid back approach to handling the Muspa's melee forms. For the second spellbook, I really like using the Archaea spells. The Thralls help do some major DPS to the boss when you're running around and avoiding attacks, which is quite nice. However, the Archaea spellbook also has two really nice spells for this boss in particular. First, the Mark of Darkness, and second, Greater Corruption. There's a, uh, a phase in the boss fight where you need to drain the Muspa's prayer, and the combination of the two aforementioned spells helps to really speed up this phase. So for my recommendation, I would say if you're a beginner to bring Ancients for the Freezes. If you have found that in the melee forms, the Muspa doesn't even touch you, uh, but you're really struggling with the prayer phase, then maybe the Archaeus Spellbook is the better option for you. Now we've talked about the gear setups. Let's talk about the boss's special mechanics. Similar to Zulra, when you enter the boss fight, the Muspa will choose either its ranged or its melee form. Its ranged form is green, while its melee form is a brown color. During its range form, it can throw out the occasional magic attack, which should be prayed against. It hits really hard and will cause you to become corrupted, which drains your precious prayer points. You'll know that the Muspa is doing its magic attack but it'll, because it'll siphon a purple energy into an orb above its head. And I would recommend playing with game sounds on because the magic attack makes a unique sound that is very easy to distinguish, even if you aren't looking at the boss. From my experience, it doesn't seem like the Muspa's magic, magic attack delays its next attack, so it's important to switch back to praying range as soon as the magic attack launches. During the boss's melee form, it will simply chase you around the room. Don't let it get too close because the boss is deadly accurate and will hit continuous 25s through your prayer, so this is where freezing him really comes into play. You should be ranging the boss during his range and mage form, and maging the boss during his melee form. The boss will switch between his melee and range form every 100 damage or so. Now the Phantom Muspa's fight consists of four select phases. Charged Clouds, Homing Spikes, Prayer Shield, and the Enrage phase. Each time the boss transition either forms or phases, it will summon spikes underneath your player. It's extremely important that you're aware of when these spikes come and can move accordingly. The spikes will remain for the duration of the fight and the Muspa will quickly cluster more spikes around each initial spike. The spikes are not walls. If you walk into them, you will take 15 damage and heal the boss for the damage that you take. The Muspa will choose a random phase for its initial phase and it'll choose either charged clouds or homing spikes. There's no way to know which phase the Muspa chooses until it actually happens, so just be ready to react accordingly. For the charged cloud phase, the Muspa will summon orbs similar to the final phase of Akka in the Tombs of a Masket. Simply avoid these orbs. A pro tip here is to stand on a very specific tile during this phase to always avoid every cloud. As a bonus, if you have a weapon with at least a 10 tile range, you can continue attacking the Muspa as he teleports around the room without getting dragged. This is free DPS. I will leave the uh, the tile marker for this particular tile in the description for this video below so that you can import it. The homing spike phase will have the Muspa summon four spikes, which slowly make their way toward your player. Simply move out of the way when they come near you to avoid these. It really isn't too difficult. One thing to note is that at the end of the phase, the homing spikes will remain wherever their last position was. You don't want the homing spikes to end up on the tile you need to stand on for your charged cloud phase. So just keep in mind your position and direction relative to the spikes and you'll be just fine. Now the prayer shield phase is where most players tend to struggle, and it's probably the most technically challenging portion of this boss. When the boss reaches less than 150 health, it will teleport to the center of the room and do a massive shockwave. Make sure you are standing behind a spike or a cluster of spikes to avoid this as it can hit up to 80 damage. Pray range and rigor if you have it and get ready for the prayer shield. The Muspa will be continually attacking with range or mage every five ticks, with soul split active and will have a 75 HP prayer shield. Your goal is to drain its prayer. Every attack the Muspa does will drain its prayer by two, so eventually his prayer shield will be disabled, but we can do a few things to speed this up. This is why people recommend having a dragon, sapphire, enchanted bolts, as they have a special effect which drains prayer. 
If you have the Zerite crossbow with dragon, sapphire, enchanted bolts, then use the special attack to drain a ton of the Muspa's prayer. If you're on the Archaeus spellbook, you should cast Mark of Darkness and Greater Corruption to help speed up that prayer drain. For everyone else, we're going to be using the Smite prayer. Now, the trick is off ticking the Muspa so that we are praying range or mage when he attacks us, but we are praying smite when we attack him. I found a way to do this really consistently and it's actually quite clever. We're going to actually slow down our own attack speed to match that of the Muspas. It sounds contradictory because usually in RuneScape, fast attacking weapons help spit out more DPS, but in this case, attacking more slowly ensures we stay in a consistent rhythm while draining the Muspa's prayer. I'm going to be demonstrating this from the perspective of the Bow of Ferdinand, which is a four tick weapon on Rapid. If you're using a T-Bow or a Rune Crossbow on Rapid, uh, there's no need for this method since you're already on that five tick cycle. Do not start attacking the Muspa after it does its slam attack. First, wait until you hear or see the start of the Muspa's range attack animation. As soon as you see or hear this, switch to Smite and click on the boss. Once you see an XP drop or your character starts its animation, switch back to the range prayer and click off the boss by clicking the tile directly underneath your character. This is similar to what we do in the Zarpus room that keeps us from auto attacking him as he stares around the room. Now we wait for the next range attack, pray smite, click boss, pray range, click off. It's as simple as that. If the Muspa does a magic attack in between, simply pray magic, then back to range and wait for that next range attack. Of course, feel free to eat and restore prayer during this phase as well. Getting back into the cycle is as simple as waiting for the Muspa's next attack with range and then praying smite. Um, this way we keep our attacks in sync with the Muspa's five tick cycle while still off ticking our attacks and prayers to not tank any hits. It sounds sweaty and confusing, but I promise you just give it a try and see if it works for you uh, during this phase. After a couple of kills, the rhythm really should come pretty naturally to you. The final phase has the Muspa attacking with range and magic, but creating a whole lot more spikes around the arena. You're going to want to position yourself in a large open area of the room and stand near the spikes. This is important because as more spikes are created, start, they will start to close in around you and suffocate you. By standing in an open area, you give yourself room to breathe and time to finish off the boss. This is a DPS check, so sip a dose of range pot, pray your best offensive prayer, and finish him off. If you're struggling to finish off the boss before the spikes engulf the room, or if you're having some close calls, you should be standing in the largest open section of the room available. Position yourself quickly as the prayer shield phase concludes and stay close to those existing spikes. The spikes will rapidly cluster together, so if you're standing out in the open, you're gonna quickly create a new cluster of spikes, which reduce the amount of area that you have to work with. Therefore, stay in an open area, but close to the existing spikes, just like my character is here. You can see how new spikes are created next to existing spikes rather than out in the open. Well, that's all I really had to share about RuneScape's newest boss. I hope you learned something interesting or this guide helped you out in some way. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as it really helps my channel grow. Thank you.